The Copperhead, the most notorious venomous snake in North America. These vipers have a reputation so fearsome that even their lookalikes get killed on sight. But what if I told you that everything you thought you knew about the Copperhead was wrong? I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm in the forests of North Texas, searching for giant black widows. But this patch of woods is crawling with copperheads and other snakes, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to debunk some common misconceptions about my absolute favorite snakes. The biggest problem with the copperhead is that a lot of people can't even identify them. While walking down the trail, we actually found one of the snakes that is most commonly mistaken for baby copperheads. A little bitty snake here. Oh, you're in bad shape, buddy. Have a look at him. Now, I'm gonna pick him up, but what's crazy is a lot of people might see this and think it's a baby copperhead, but I'm actually in no danger right now. This is a harmless little brown snake. This is a non-venomous slug and worm eater, usually fossorial, but since it's shady here and it's not the hottest, he's probably out. Honestly, he's probably crossing from this side of the leaf litter to that side, just in passing, and we happen to walk up on them. Little skinny tan snake, a lot of camouflage out here in a you know leaf litter covered woodland environment. You can see how people would think this is a baby copperhead, but this is a little brown snake. But a couple things you can notice. One, look at his face. His face is kind of blunted in and he has those little patches on, on the side. Very dark brown head. Generally a copperhead's head is gonna be lighter colored than the rest of his body. A more uh, copper bronze color is where you get the name Copperhead from. And if you look at the body patterning here, he's got little tiny spots all down his back and no real banding or like patches like you see with Copperheads. And with Copperheads, they're actually the most common venomous snake in North America. When I first moved to the Southern United States, I was led to believe that these snakes were everywhere. And walking around hiking, every single tuft of grass, every bush, every log could have had a copper head lurking underneath it just waiting and itching to bite me. But the truth about these snakes is while they're fairly common, they're actually very shy and secretive. And even in this patch of woods where there's a pretty healthy population, we actually had to look around for quite a while before we found our first copperhead. Hi buddy, sorry to wake you up. This is a very unfriendly copperhead, but that's to be expected. We came into his habitat and flipped over his resting place. But this is a copperhead, probably one of the most common venomous snakes here in the southern US. And believe it or not, this little snake right here is responsible for more venomous snake bites than any other species in this country because they are so unbelievably common. And you can see right there, they're unbelievably camouflaged. They rely on that as their primary source of defense and for hunting, for ambush predators. And yep, just like that, you get too close, they'll lash out and nail you right on the ankle. While they do cause the most venomous snake bites, they're not mean or aggressive. We disturbed this snake and he's defending himself. And given that copperheads are on the smaller side, they can be very fearful and flighty. A snake like this will only strike if he feels cornered and can't get away. You can see that I keep hooking the snake and bringing him back into the view for the camera so he feels cornered and captured. We're, uh, we're filming B-roll of the snake and uh, getting some strike shots and he just peppered the back of my phone with venom. Um, yeah, again, this is not a mean snake, but he is very passionately defending himself. Um, copperheads are not friendly. So even though we're, we're telling you to uh, not kill them because they're not like deadly mean things, they're still not something you wanna go on like mess with. You know, Jack and I, we're, we're a little bit touched in the head. You know, we go out and look for these things. Um, and we're also professionals. So like leave the venomous snake stuff to people like us. Don't try to replicate what we're doing because that could go in your veins and you'll have a pretty bad day. Now for the reason you probably came here in the first place. Copperheads are portrayed as these horribly deadly snakes by the media. But is that actually true? Got a little one? Yeah. Let's see. Um, half the size is the first one. Oh wow, he's tiny. Mm -hmm. oh, he's got the very much southern patterning. Yeah. Little baby. Look at you. Oh, did you strike at something? Whoa, he's a killer. He's so cute, little baby copperhead. And he is chilled out for the most part, which is really nice. But this is exactly what we're looking for. These are definitely a more common venomous snake. And aside from the pygmy rattlesnake, this is the smallest viper in the US. And as a result, 
the toxicity of this animal is actually fairly low. Take a look at his head there. You can see those little bulbous areas where his venom glands are, but compared to even his close cousins, the cottonmouth, they're not very big. And that's really important when it comes down to if you're actually bitten by this snake, because the severity of a venomous bite is gonna boil down to how much venom you actually receive. We think of copperheads as a dangerously venomous snake. You know, the, the media attention they get is, oh, this is a deadly viper, and if you get bitten by it, you're gonna die. Now, I wouldn't say that this is a snake you can completely write off. If you're bitten by a copperhead, it is definitely a good idea to go to the hospital and get checked out. But you probably won't even get antivenom for a bite from a copperhead. It's mostly gonna be antihistamines and antibiotics. You're gonna be making sure that your body can handle and process the venom without actually getting too damaged. Because when it comes down to it, copperhead venom compared to any other North American pit viper is really not that toxic. And you get so little of it that it's highly unlikely that you get a lethal dose, even from a full tank of a snake this size. They're just, these have not evolved to eat humans or really that large of prey. They're gonna be eating little mammals like, like rodents and relatives out here in the forest. So their venom is really not designed to kill humans. It'll mess with your system quite a bit, but it is not something to be terribly worried about. And at the end of the day, while the bite is excruciatingly painful, in a 1v1 fight between a person and a copperhead or cottonmouth, we could probably stomp the snake to death long before the venom had any chance to take effect. If you take away only one thing from this video, remember this. We are more dangerous to these snakes than they are to us. Venomous or not, the copperhead is just a fragile little reptile and an important part of our ecosystem that deserves our distance and respect. If you've enjoyed learning about the copperhead in this video and would like to see an even more insane, fragile little venomous snake, check out this video where I track down all three subspecies of the incredibly rare pygmy rattlesnake. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.